What would a carbon capture factory look like? Like this? Or this? And how much would they cost to build and operate? Fortunately, we already have our own carbon capture factories called peat box. We're lucky enough to have lots of them in the UK. There are particular peat bogs that grow in the hollows on flat ground in the lowlands. Let's have a closer look at the bogs on the Solway. So how do you make a peat bog? To make one in the lowlands, you need to melt some glaciers. That takes quite a while. Fortunately, we melted some earlier to move things along, about 10,000 years earlier. Glaciers leave behind a lot of mess. They scour out hollows and dump silt, stones and rocks, sometimes into large heaps called drumlins. They're surrounded by pools of meltwater where mosses, sedges and other wetland plants begin to grow in the water holes. The biggest drumlins form islands in the landscape, an ideal place for humans to settle in such a wet place. Sphagnum moss is a special bog moss that can hold more than 20 times its weight in water and it gently grows on top of previous growth, capturing carbon from the atmosphere. Over 10,000 years, the water holes slowly fill in with the pickled remains of dead plants. This is what we call peat and it is jam-packed with carbon. Peat is 90% water, the rest is pickled plants and organic matter and the sphagnum moss keeps growing like a skin on top, holding water above the ground it grows on, protecting the peat. You can end up with a dome of carbon-rich peat that can be over 15 metres tall. That's way taller than a four-storey building. Because of its great absorbing powers, the skin of living sphagnum moss acts like a sponge, soaking up rainfall in the wet seasons until the moss plants are full up. Then, in the warmer weather, the moss skin protects the peat underneath from drying out in the hot sun. A healthy bog actually rises and falls as the mossy skin swells or shrinks through the year. This keeps the precious peat carbon store safely locked underwater, away from the air, and this can also help slow down chances of flooding downstream, and makes a wonderful home for many different animals, plants and birds. Before we understood what good carbon capture factories peat box are, we exploited the stored peat in many other ways. It can build simple shelters, it can be burned as fuel, you can drain it to grow crops and trees, and modern gardeners love it for growing seeds and plants in. So for centuries, humans have been busy digging ditches to drain away the water and get at the useful peat. By the beginning of the 20th century, Almost 95% of peat bogs in the UK lowlands had been damaged by drainage. Water is the life support for a bog. As soon as the water goes, the special sphagnum skin dries out and dies. As soon as the peat is dry enough, trees can grow and their roots can take up even more water. This all means that oxygen in the air can get at thousands of years of stored carbon and the carbon capture factory becomes a carbon dioxide producing factory instead. Not only that, but less water gets held in the peat bog, so flooding can happen more quickly, and all the birds and plants and animals lose their special lovely homes. The good news is that although our bogs are badly damaged, they can be repaired. Strange monsters have been out working to restore the wetlands. Ditches are filled and bundied cells are created. These are man-made underground peat dams that trap water.
This keeps the peat underwater, carbon release is slowed right down, and conditions improve for native species. Peat bunds can be made right next to farmland or extend out onto the peaty soils. This means we can remake bog edge habitats that have been lost, keep more carbon in the ground and some sympathetic farming too. Unlike a normal factory, the South Solway Mosses are a national nature reserve and open for everyone to share. There are boardwalks and paths in all our bogs, please promise not to wander off them, and the views are terrific. You can have a great day out learning more about wildlife and the importance of peat bogs at our nature reserves. You can also help us to learn more about the peat bog too. Taking samples from deep peat and on drumlins can tell us more about the people, plants and animals that have lived here. We know that Celts, Romans and monks were all here in the past, and samples help tell us how they lived. Keep an eye open for events and projects on a nature reserve near you. You never know what you might find. <laughs>